You learn to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. I love this beautiful setting. It's like something you see ab- abroad. Amen. Next thing I will move all this thing and put water and be flowing like this. <laughs> Amen. Good morning. Um, I'm, I'm not happy that I am coming by this time. But I had to, you know, know what's going on. But I know this meeting has been going on since morning. And uh, I want to appreciate you all. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God again for our chief host, uh, Pastor Prince. You can see he, he has not shaved because uh, <laughs> uh, it's not easy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was talking with um, Pastor Abana about him. He said, Pastor Prince is capable. Uh, Pastor Prince is resourceful. Pastor Prince is a man you can trust to deliver. Hallelujah. So, I'm very excited that we're here this morning. Father, we thank you. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. Thank you. 
you, Father. In Jesus' name. Let's give God praise, somebody in the house. Hallelujah. Let's give Him glory. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. We praise you. Amen and amen. Amen. Please take your seat. God bless you. I want to personally thank my friend, my brother, Pastor Ken. Let's appreciate God for Pastor Ken. Pastor Ken is the embodiment of the spirit of service. And um, the world will hear about you. The world. Amen. You see, it's not us that promote ourselves. So you start, because if they say the world will hear about you, someone will start calculating his brain. What will I now do for the world to hear about me? It's not up to you. We take too much upon ourselves and we stress ourselves out. It's not up to you to lift yourself. Your own is to humble yourself. God's own is to lift you. You see, the work has been shared. Praise the Lord. What's my job? He said, humble yourself. What's his own part? So, it's not my job to lift myself. It will be stressful. And because you are the one lifting yourself, man can also bring you what? Because um, whatever is made by man can be destroyed by man. But if God is the one lifting you, no power can bring you down. Come on, praise the Lord. So I don't have any problem about lifting and all those things. No, that's not my part. Mine is to find what he wants me to do and humble myself and do it. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due. And that lifting has a time attached to it. When that time comes, events will begin to collide with themselves. Things will begin to happen. Circumstances begin to shift. Men will begin to relocate. People will begin to remember you. Circumstances will begin to that require your your intervention will just start happening because your time has what come. When the time of Joseph came, God forced that man to dream a dream that only Joseph could decode. When your time comes, come on, praise the Lord. You will not force it. You will not stress it. It will happen by itself. Just get busy doing the ones he, he says you. If it's choir, stay in the choir and, and do the choir. If it's, if it's usher, be an usher. Be the usher. Whatever he tells you to do, do what? Do it with all your might, with all your strength. Because a day is coming when your time, your clock will tick. Makabo Shakadarabad. Hallelujah. This message should, should make somebody just remove your stress from your shoulder. Help me say, it's not up to me to lift myself. Whose job is that? But when you now switch places with God and now say, let me lift myself, God's job now becomes to humble you. Because two of you can't do the same work. You can't lift yourself and God is lifting you too. No. He doesn't want you to mistake whose glory it is. So it doesn't touch, it doesn't share his glory. Okay, you want to lift yourself now. Let me be the one to humble you now. Because one person must humble and one person must lift. Are you getting the point there now? Praise the Lord. I declare your lifting now. As you serve him with all your hearts, the Lord shall remember you. I said, the Lord shall remember you. The Bible says, and the Lord remembered Noah. The Lord shall remember you. When he remembers you, people who forgot you will start remembering you. Listen to me. People are forgetting you because God has not remembered you. When he remembers you, they will come looking for you. You will say, why, why am I suddenly, what's going on? Your season has come. And I want to pronounce to somebody, your season has come. I don't know who I came to prophesy to. Your time has come. Just keep, don't tell nobody, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't let somebody pressure you into what you're not ready for. Stay in your lane. God knows where you are. Joseph, God knows the particular dungeon where they hid you, Joseph. It doesn't matter. You see, Joseph was in the dungeon, but somebody was discussing him in the palace. And then when his name was brought up, the king said, bring him here. It didn't matter why he was in prison. The woman never came out to confess. 
that okay he did not rape me nothing like that happened no it did not matter because when your time comes nothing matters all allegations against you will not mean anything because your season has come they didn't say why is he in prison they said ah he tried to rape one of your officers wife uh, ah no it did not matter what matters is that there is a national crisis and this is the man that can solve the problem so we can't have the man who can solve problem inside the dungeon we will have a problem bring him here and by the word of a king every 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 sentence against him was overruled because power passed power the judge put him in prison but the, the, the pharaoh said what bring him i see a, a higher authority that's about to reverse every authority that's right where you are right now something higher than the power holding you is about to speak on your behalf I command your liberation in the name of Jesus. And they brought him to Pharaoh. And he didn't know whether they want to now pass final sentence. He didn't know what they were calling for. He was shaking, he was afraid. Are you Joseph? Yes. I heard you can interpret him. He, he had prepared what to tell Pharaoh that he's not the one. He didn't do anything to do, Suman. That he did not touch her. That, you know, he had prepared his speech. The man said, I heard you can interpret dreams. I dreamed a dream. Hallelujah. God is arranging something for you, somebody here. Just be faithful. Be what? Be what? Be faithful. When it will happen, no power can stop it. All your enemies will become your fans. They will be the one to tell the story of your resurrection. The same people that talked about your going down are the ones that will say, He's back. She's back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I break the power of darkness. I break the power of the enemy. I summon the strength of heaven on behalf of these ones. And I say, Lord, this weekend, let it be such a turnaround that we will know there was a turnaround. That our help of the Lord is a turnaround. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, come and do your work in our hearts. Bring us to that place where you want us to be. The place where you want us to be. The kind of person you want us to be. The kind of person you bless. The kind of person you use. The kind of person you promote. Make us to be like that today. And throughout this day try this weekend thank you father lord in jesus name we have prayed give god praise i just i just took out time to the holy ghost directed me to speak to somebody this thing i just did now i spoke to somebody now i don't know who you are i just left the message and i address you your time is about to come no power will stop it come to say just be faithful go and tell some of the lessons just be faithful if you are camera man be a faithful camera man the one who in the church, do it faithfully. If you're the one cutting the grass, don't miss it. If you are with the children, commit yourself there. Don't say if I commit myself too much, I will miss something. You're not missing anything. You're not missing anything. If I stay with this pastor, if I stay with this pastor, I will miss what's happening in other places. No, 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 no. Stay where you are. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Please take your seats. Um, praise the Lord I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and to be amongst ministers and leaders and workers um, I'm hoping before as the meeting progresses we'll get to you know meet more and uh, because I want to see the pastors I want to know them um, we're going to have a, a maybe after this session we can just have a small meeting to know ourselves praise the lord i'm committed to this i'm committed to this city i'm not just visiting praise the lord i'm not just making mouth i've been i've been doing crusades in Ezilo. discipleship crusades there um the man who has been bringing on bringing us to Ezilo is here with us let's appreciate reverend Hi, Junius, Shin and Merum. Hallelujah. 
very humble man you will never know but he commands a lot of men praise the lord and he's doing a lot of great work he's part of dgi amen those of us who were in the dinner he was also here with his wife praise the lord i also want to appreciate next to him pastor solomon another trusted son clap your hands for him the man shaking his community these people are in the rural they are in the rural area hallelujah we have the rural operation we're doing where jesus actually is if jesus came to town he'll go to the village <laughs> praise the lord he also come to town don't worry praise the lord because he was going to the towns and the villages amen amen, amen. amen. but you see that's 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 uh, th- that kind of christianity that we don't see anymore go to the village you see that they are still brethren who still love god amen, amen. so we have had this uh, opportunity to go and do a lot of work and uh, and also standing there is pastor Caleb. let's appreciate go for pastor Caleb. he also has own work there in the village too amen these are people i work with amen praise the lord praise the lord and then of course my own brother pastor winston is with us here let's appreciate god for this great man hallelujah he has followed us and is part of DGI. He has a very wonderful, wonderful input and impact. And, um, and personally too. Amen. 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 So I want to uh, move on. I'm seeing a lot of people who, which I will get to know as we, as we progress. Yesterday night, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally not... I think the Holy Spirit himself came in to open the night. Praise the Lord. And laid the foundation. And um, there was a dimension we entered into. And then... Um, so this morning I'm hoping to teach. Praise the Lord. Okay, uh, let's go to Matthew 28 verse 18. Oh, we can't project, yeah? See, I'm... Okay. Okay, ah, can you see that? Oh, yes, it's well, it's well, it's well. This, this is good. Do you like this church? Wow, we'll be, we'll be using this place for all those. Uh, hallelujah! This is and it is strategic. Only a man God loves will find this kind of place, a man that God loves specially. Praise the that loves God. Praise the Lord. It's a strategic, powerful place. Wow. I'm thinking of other things we'll do here now. Let's just be going. Amen. All right. So Matthew 28, let's see verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and what? It's also instructive that the, before he went into the next point, he said this first. Help me say all authority. So if you're looking for where all authority resides, it's on this subject. All authority, all power in heaven and what? That means what I'm about to tell you has the backing of all the power in heaven on earth. All the power you can ever ask for, desire, is available for this mission. Look at what he said in verse 19. Go therefore. Those who speak English, when we say go therefore, what's therefore therefore? As a result of. So as a result of verse 18, because all authority is given to me in heaven and what? Based on this, go. Hallelujah. That means this mission has the backing of what? All authority. If you want to know where the authority is, all the resources are. He said, you did not choose me, I chose you and ordained you that you go and what? Bear fruits and that your fruits may remain. Therefore, so that whatever shall ask me, I shall give it to you. So, there's also an open check. That whatever shall ask me, if you're doing this, it's available to you. So, there, there's a company of people on this earth who have all access to anything God has. And it's those who are involved in this program. Am, am I talking to somebody here? Praise the Lord. If you are not involved in discipleship, you are not involved in the kingdom. 
I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how elaborate or how noisy it is. If you're not involved in discipleship, you are totally wasting your time. And I'll say it, and I'll say it again. I said it somewhere uh, in, a, in a conference. Professor Anibogo picked that one. He said, Pasima, that thing you say, you know how he talks, it resonated. You know I will not use the word resonated. I don't use such words. Pasima, that word resonated. You said, if you're not doing, if you're not making disciples, you're wasting your time. And if you're not being discipled, they are wasting your time. He said to me, that's just it. So he now organized a Zoom conference and invited me to come and speak to all his alumni around the world. So I can come and tell. He said, the topic, you're, talk, you're just you're going to talk on if you're not making disciples. You're what? <laughs> you're wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lebo said, if you're not making disciples, if you're not being discipled, you're wasting your time. Look at how many years you're wasting as a Christian. When that was what was, to, was said last before leaving. So who deceived us? Seven nights of prophecy. 14 days of uh, who do me this thing. 21 nights of where's my, where's my bone. 22, you're wasting your time. Koboko nights. Suya nights. Jean Sunday. These things are not wrong. As long as it arrives at the purpose of God. Am I talking to anybody here? You can have any kind of program to have, but make sure at the back of your mind you are, you are listening to, you are doing what he, the master gave us to do here. Go ye therefore. That's about point somebody's face and say, go therefore. That means don't sit in one place. Go. There's always going involved. Praise the Lord. Go ye what? And make. Like a sculptor uses uh, clay and makes a cup. Take from a raw material and sculpt into them the image I made of you. Go and reproduce yourself in men. Everything I have done in you, I've taught you, take it and go and teach others too. Don't tell me you don't have what to preach. All these people waiting on God for what to say. You're wasting your time. What to say has been said. There is no new message. Don't reinvent the wheel. The message has been given you. What message? The one they gave you. It's what am I to preach? What did they preach to you? He said to Timothy, the same thing which I... You heard me say... Among many witnesses. So, you, we went to many places and we said the same thing many places. You heard me repeat this many places. The same. Don't go praying ask God what's the word for my generation. No. The same. Commit to faithful men who will also teach what? Help me say the same message. If you go to medical school, is it not the same um, uh, what's that word you call it? The same um, curriculum which they use for for those who came before you, eh? They will, it's, it's the same notes. The same note that produced doctors in 1960 is what they're using to produce doctors in 2023. It's only Christians that want to invent their message. The same thing. God made this so easy. He said, my burden is what? Light. My yoke is easy. Why are you stressing yourself? Just take what they told you and what? Look at it. It says, go there and make what? Do you understand? Make. This chair was what? Made. This chair did not make himself. We will be worried if we, this chair just appeared and said, I am in your chair now. Where, where, who made you? Nobody. Will you sit on that kind of chair? You may disappear with it. Praise the Lord. It was made by somebody. He said, every house is what? Is made by somebody. So he said, go and what? Make disciples. Of all what? Baptizing them. Now this is important. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost rebuked me one day when I wanted to rush through this. He said, stop, go back there. I went back. He said, why are you skipping baptizing them? Because making discipleship and water baptism go hand in hand. I hope you understand that. 
there was something preached to the Ethiopian eunuch that only God knows what Philip told him. That when he got to a place, he saw water. He said, here is water. What stops me from being baptized? So the message included baptism. They understood that there is no way you enter into the kingdom except through water. <laughs> we enter by water. Water is your access. Because for them to leave Egypt, they had to go through what? Water. And in that water, they were baptized unto Moses. Praise the Lord in the house. So in this water, you are baptized unto who? It's an initiation. So the discipleship cannot be complete without water baptism. You must go through water. Because there are certain things still lay claim on you that will still lay claim on you until you go through water. Their contract with Pharaoh ended in the water. He said, the Egyptians should see what? You shall see them. There are things we are still seeing around us because we have not entered. People are trying to disciple. Take them to where? And complete the job. Jesus said, except a man is born of the spirit and of what? Water. Literal water. He shall not enter the kingdom. So we have taken water baptism and we have relegated it. So it's not important. It's very important. We need to bring it back. And if you have not been baptized by a mansion, your discipleship is not complete. Look at what he said. Make uh, disciples of all nations. It, it goes hand in hand. Baptizing them. Baptizing them. In the name, one word, one name. Of the Father and of the Son and of what? Put in the water. Something spiritual happens when you enter water. Something happens. Yokes are broken. Identities are changed. Something mysterious happens in the water. And it happens after teaching and understanding. When people understand, there was something the Enoch understood that he was looking for water. He said, Here is water. What stops me? He said, Do you believe that Christ is not Yes, I believe. Wow. And by the water baptism, God also promoted Philip to another level. But when he turned to greet the man, the man had vanished and appeared in Azotus. They didn't need a plane to fly. God is restoring the glory in the these last days. You're going to see somebody leave church and then he'll call you, tell you he's in Lagos. You say, but you, you just... Dimensions are coming back. The glory is returning back. Like we've not seen before. Am I talking to somebody here? So when you hear God bringing this kind of messages back, it means that he's coming back to bring back his church. Praise the Lord in the house. Tell somebody we must baptize in water. There is no true discipleship or salvation without water. I have repented before the Holy Ghost and I think all of us should if you are, you know, if you're a pastor, there has to be a day in a month, you gather everybody and put them inside what? According to his word. He said, our God commanded it. Who are you to remove what our God said? He knows what it takes to be his disciple. Put them inside what? Water. He also went and was baptized in under who? Under John. That's why when they asked him, whose disciple are you? He pointed to who? I hope you know that Jesus Christ was the disciple of John. <laughs> and the man said to him, he said, Behold the Lamb of that take it away. Praise the Lord now. Glory to God, somebody here. It was by his endorsement that his ministry started. He didn't fall from the tree. A man had to point him out. A man had to say, This is the Lamb of God. And when he turned, the people he said it to have left him. Praise the Lord. Glory to God, somebody here. Now let's go after that. He said, I know the okay, so have I stressed on this? Please, everywhere I go now, I, I, I take time to talk about this now because we have left water baptism for junior pastors or John baptized by himself. Praise the Lord. He says, um, teaching them to do what? Now, teaching them. So in, in, this, in discipleship, two things happen. Water baptism, Salvation, water baptism. Salvation, water baptism, teaching. Can we say it together? Salvation, water baptism. Now, teaching them to do what? The word observe in that version says obey. 
teaches them to obey. So the purpose of discipleship is not knowledge. Knowledge is a, is a, is a process. But the end product is what? Obedience. Teaching them to what? Obey all things that I have. So command them as I commanded you. Whatever I told you to do, tell them also the same. You're not trying to teach. Because these people are illiterate. If, they, if, if ministry depended on their, on their education, they wouldn't have made it. They just repeated what they were told. Praise the Lord. I, 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 I teaching them to observe all things that I have what? Commanded you. And lo, and lo, I am with you. How many times? Always. Even to the end of the age. So another thing that you, the, the, there's a guarantee is the ever abiding presence of Jesus Christ. So we have the guarantee of his power, his authority. We also have the guarantee of his ever abiding what? Look at said, and lo, I am with you. How many times? Even to the end of the age. You want to know whether God is with you. Get into discipleship. You want to know whether God is involved in your life. Get into what? There's no question about a disciple, whether God is with him. God is with him. Once you're into discipleship, he says, Lo, I'm with you always, even to what? To the end of the age. Say amen, somebody here. Now let's strike, let's focus on this one. Teaching them. Have you said teaching them? So the teaching is what we came to do today. What are the things we teach to produce disciples? It's not every teaching that makes disciples. There are teachings that produce entitled Christians. When you teach too much about what is yours in Christ, you start producing what? Teach it too much. If you teach too much about what God can do for you, what God should do for you, and you keep teaching that kind of teaching, what you're going to produce are Christians who expect God to do what? Everything and do nothing for God. So they come to church and wait for God to do it. Praise the Lord. So there are teachings that produce... uh, you, You cannot teach law and produce doctors. Can you? You can't you can teach medicine and produce accountants. So what you put in is what you... If you want to get disciples, you have to be intentional about teaching discipleship things. Not every message is discipleship message. Praise the Lord. That's why what he, t- he told the multitude was not what he told his men, his disciples. Praise the Lord. Not every teaching can produce disciples. He said to them, unto you it is given to know what? The mysteries of what? The kingdom. But to these people I speak in parables. So he did not teach the same thing to everybody. He, he spoke parables to disciples, I mean to the multitudes. When he came to the his men. Hallelujah. A, a father doesn't say the same things he says to his children, to his children's cousins. You don't say the same thing to your children as you say to your neighbor's children when they visit. When your neighbor's children visit, uh, visit what do you say? Oh, Charles, how is your father? Okay. You're very nice, Che. Even your kids will be wor- worried why you're this nice. Because they know you're not a nice man. Praise the Lord. You're not saying, ah, give him Fanta. That Fanta in the fridge. You're not give Charles Fanta. And you're, not, you're, you're, mum- you're murmuring because you know that your father has never given you Fanta since Christmas, in, you know, 2007. Praise the Lord. And now here he is giving Charles. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. Because Charles is not going to stay. Charles will what? But you, the Bible says, a son abides. So, I cannot be treating you as a visitor. There are messages you hear in church, it is visitor message they're giving you. Because you don't belong in the kingdom. You are a visitor in the kingdom. You are a visitor. So, we'll give you Fanta. We we'll give you sprites. <laughs> oh, 
We'll give you coke. We'll give you granites. Because you will soon go. You have no heritage here. <laughs> but when we now turn to the children, we say, come on, God, watch your this. Because the father's glory is tied to his children. Am I talking now? He <laughs> <It> cannot, he <laughs> can't be nice to you. <laughs> because he's nice to you, mess up. <laughs> so he has to use hand, praise the Lord, to mold you. Those days, this person will come to our house, my father will be happy and happy, and then I will be sitting around, and they will happy, and then he will give me that look. That look. That look was like 1,000 words. I knew. If I was, even flogging was in the look. Everything, we just do like this. The visitor didn't know when he gave me that look. <laughs> I got up and just, <laughs> I left the house. I didn't, I, I went outside. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so we, we, we are not this, we are not, we don't treat everybody what? The same. The Bible said he dismissed the multitudes. Uh, you've got your miracle now. Oh yeah, go. And he kept his disciples. He sent the multitudes what? So the question, if Christ was around now, which category will you belong? Will you be among the people he will dismiss? Service has ended. Go, please. You have received. Or will you be among the say, oh yeah, tell this one, this one, this one to wait. Ah. Will you be among the ones he holds back? Or will you be among the ones he says, thank you. See you next Sunday. Malabo shaka daraba. So when you see them pampering you too much in the kingdom, be afraid. He said, because when they discipline you, he said, he's treating you as a son. They say, treatment for sons. When they are correcting you, it's because there's a destiny in you. But if they don't correct you, it means there's nothing they see in you. If nobody is calling you to, to order, it means there is nothing about you. But when they begin to call you and say, you cannot be dressing like this. Why? Because my vision of you is bigger than what you're seeing right now. So, uh, uh, my son, Biko, uh, don't wear this again. It doesn't fit you. My daughter, don't dress. You don't belong to these people. You, you are of a different stock. There's a, there's a destiny in, on you. They say, you have an appointment. There's something God is saying concerning you. So, you cannot be like this. You cannot be like that. And then you, you resist and you cry. But after a while, you notice that you're getting better than your contemporaries. You notice that you're no longer sitting in the same seat with them. You notice that they are not coming to you for advice. Because by reason of the hand that is handling you in the house, you are becoming a king among your equals. Am I talking to somebody here? I tell somebody, I'm changing, I'm changing. Come on, say last, I'm changing, I'm changing, I'm changing. I'm changing, I'm changing. I'm changing. I didn't like it, but I needed it. I, I didn't like it, but it was necessary. Am I talking to somebody here? It, it was painful, but I needed it. I needed that rebuke. He says, rebuke him with all authority. I needed that rebuke. If you, they are, they are, you need to go to your pastor and buy him a bottle of wine for rebuking you. Because he said, the son whom he loved, he chastened it. So, if he doesn't chasten you, fill in the blank space. If you are doing what you are doing and nobody is talking to you, I'm sorry for you. So I said, the same hand which I use on you people, use, the, use on them, and reproduce in them what I did in you. Say amen, somebody here. Amen. Say, I am a member of a long chain of impacts. I have received. I have become. Now I must give. Do you get it now? If Pastor Prince received the impact made in him and he sat with it, will not be here. If he put his own selfish plans ahead of him and said, I beg, I have things to do. Let me go and do those things. Yes, I've heard, but let me go and do. Uh, this meeting will not hold here at least. And all the people he has blessed will look for who will bless them. Because sometimes people are tied, assigned to you. If you don't go for them, nobody will. God has assigned those people to you. That's why you can't fail. Because there are people that will not emerge if you don't rise. 
Tell me, tell somebody, it's not about me. There are nations inside of me. Can you imagine sitting with that nation? Can you imagine that after a Dahosa, smaller Dahosa, the Bible says, not the Bible. The Bible. Because the book of us is the only book that didn't end with uh, the grace. They left it open because they are still writing the book. <laughs> so in the book of Acts, chapter 29, praise the Lord. That's how I was playing football with his friends. And then one mischievous one said to him, because there was a assembly of God meeting going on in a primary school. So you could see, there was a window, you could see the head of the pastor. <laughs> The man was preaching. So, the other said, he's going to shoot the ball and he hits the head. See, he doesn't want to hear. <laughs> so, he kicked the first time. He hit the wall, came back. They said, hit it again, hit it again. He the second one, he hit the third one. He went so fast, so hard on the wall and hit him on the chest. The pastor wasn't even aware. But his ends were, praise the Lord. And when the thing hit him on the chest, he collapsed. Guess who came to revive him? The pastor. <laughs> The pastor now came and, uh, woke, uh, and then his friends he said, are you okay? okay? And then they poured water on him. <laughs> he felt very bad. <laughs> and then he now, the pastor said to him, come in and, and share and, and be part of the, he said, I, I, don't, I don't deserve to be. He said, no, come in, come in. And his friends were asking him, he said, no, let me hear what this man is saying. That's how his journey started. What if he followed his friend and left? Hey! Help me tell somebody, you can't afford to fail. Get up and tell somebody, shake the person up. You can't afford. So many destinies are tied to you. You can't. You can't sit down with the things you're receiving. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. It's no longer about you now. Generations. Depending on your consistency. Generations. Depending on your obedience. Can you imagine one man's disobedience wrecked a whole generation of men? One man. Just one man that ate a, a fruit. It's not eat. All of us got into a problem. One man. One man. So you don't know the, the power of what one person can do. What you that if you can get it right. Tell somebody, I have to get this thing right. And from listening to that man, he joined the church. And then the, the rest, they say, is what? History. Sit down. Say, as I have received, I must impact. As I have received, I must impact. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, we have received. We are receiving. Every disciple must have disciples. What qualifies you to be called a disciple of Jesus Christ that you have disciples? So you have two people in your life. The ones who are imparting into you and the ones you are imparting into. If you only have people that give you and you have nobody to give, very soon God will stop giving you. Because God is not a waster. Jesus said to them, what I say to you, I say to all. So, so God looks at you as a potential. When he said to Adam, be fruitful, he wasn't talking to Adam, the man. He was talking to Adam, the human race. So when God is doing one thing with you, it's not just you. He's looking at the people that will follow you. Praise the Lord in the house. Praise the Lord in this house. I have received, I must give. You know, Paul said that which we have what? Received. The same with what? John said that which we have seen, handled, felt, seen, the same we communicate. So it's as you have received. Paul said in Hebrews uh, chapter 5 verse 12, he said for when, for the time you ought to be what? Teachers. You still need to be taught the first so there's a time to be a student learning and it's a time to be a teacher teaching. God is hoping that everything you're receiving, somebody else will receive from you. That is his goal. That is his plan. So the purpose of discipleship is not for you to be discipled, but for you to come to the place where you're not discipling what? 
who are discipling what? Who are discipling others. So the chain continues. We are here today because of men who took the job. If they did not do their job, we will not be here. So it is unfair for you to receive ministry and sit on it. It's a sin. Praise the Lord. Say, I have received it. I must give it out. He said, for though by this time you ought to be... I love this one. I said, for though by this time. So there, there, there's a time. Help me say there's a time. God is waiting. There's a time. God said, ah, ah, where are your children now? Where are your spiritual children? I don't have any. I just, I just like coming to church. Some people can come to church for 10 years. No one soul. It's a sin. That person can go to hell. He said, the brand that does not what? What will he do? How can Jesus cut you off and you end up in heaven? If they have cut you off, it means you have no access to grace. They will not cut you off. For though by this time you ought to be what? Teachers. Help me say by this time. Then you know by this time. You ought to have students. You ought to have, you ought to have children. Spiritual what? Hallelujah. That's what by this time. There ought to be people praising God because of you. Blessing God because of you. Where are they? He said, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to what? Teach you again. The first principles, some of us go to, you leave your church, go to another church, and you, and they, and they, you join foundation class there again. You go to another church, you join new convert class again. After 17 years as a Christian. They should bring you out and use belt and do what? And flog the devil out of you. Because you are, you are possessed. Hallelujah. You have removed the old sticker, you put a new one now. Your father is no longer your father. You have sacked your father, you have a new father now. You don't sack fathers. You don't change fathers. You don't choose fathers. It has been chosen for you. You can't wake up and chase and, and no longer be the son of your biological father. You can't wake up and say, he's no longer my father. Because he's no, he doesn't have money. Dan Goethe is not your father. Dan Goethe will deny you. Praise the Lord in the house. What your father could not achieve, that's why you are there to become the extension of your father. Am I talking to anybody here? You are the one who to fulfill the unfulfilled dreams. You know, this man wrote a book, Barack Obama, and called the book Dreams from My Father. Not Dreams of My Father. Dreams from My Father. That means the dreams which his father had that he could not fulfill in Kenya is what he's now fulfilling as president of America. So the purpose of a son is to fulfill the things the father could not do. Not to mock the father. You're not supposed to leave your father because your father is not as rich as the other fathers. A lot of crazy things happen in the body of Christ. You leave your father that laid the foundation of your spiritual life and then you now join winners. And now you're not calling a man who doesn't know anything about you. Papa. What about the, the, the main papa that preached the gospel to you, came to visit you, helped you to, okay, maybe because he has some personality problems. Your father is your father. I know some of you won't like me again. I don't, I don't even care. Listen to me. Eh? God will not bless me until somebody hates me. He will set a table before you. Where? If you don't have enemies, no table for you. No table for you. I tell people, if you love me, good for you. If you hate me, good for me. I don't get anything when you love me. When you not hate me. Ah, God rises. <laughs> tell somebody, do you love me? <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> Amen. I might see your friend here. Go back to your father and apologize. <laughs> go back, buy ram and go and tell him you're sorry. And reconnect with your father. Don't leave your father because he has a small church. And then you're not going to join this one that has plane. You may deceive yourself, but the angels are not deceived. And God honors labor. God will not take what belongs to one man and give to another man. I hope you understand. That's why when you keep sowing that seed to that man that is not your father, nothing is coming out of it. 
Because that's not your ground. I think I, I ought to preach this in Lagos and Abuja. And another test. And I will. Go back. Go back and help your father. Turn to the person and say, go back and help your father. <laughs> go back and help what? <laughs> your father. Ah, he did this. He did that. I don't care what he did. Noah misbehaved. Drank alcohol. And became what? Naked. And his son, Ham, whose job is not to expose his father, but to what? Cover your father. Your job is not to tell us what is wrong with your father. Your job is to protect your father. Your father is your father, whether it's right or wrong. Help me say, my father is my father. The job of the son is not to expose his father. He saw his father's nakedness and did what? And went and told the matter. And the others who heard it, the same information but different reaction. They said, our father is naked. God forbid. We can't even see it. They took a blanket and went backwards. And covered their father. And soon enough, the man who was drunk, his eyes cleared. Because Noah will soon wake up. And the words of Noah still have weight. Whether he's drunk or not. Mamba shake it. Those angry statements they make on your life are not things you should ignore. He did not cause harm. He caused Canaan. Because nothing pains a father like the suffering of a son. You see, when you do something and you suffer, you know you, you brought it. But when your children are suffering for what you did, that is terrible. That's why when the curse is on a man, he doesn't know it because it doesn't manifest in his time. It manifests in his children's time. He made it clear to you, touch not my what? And do my prophets no harm. At the end of this event, I pray that every mistake made, the Lord will help you correct it. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, 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 yes. There are conversations you should never have, especially those concerning those who are above you. If they bring you in, tell them, I am not what? It's not everything you talk about. It's not everything that's open to conversation. I don't want to discuss my father. That conversation is above my pay grade. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody it's a time to be a child. And it's a time to be a son. It's a time to be a student. And it's a time to be what? A teacher. You still need to be taught again the first principles of the oracles of God and you have come to need what? Milk and not what? Solid. Let me have one handkerchief. Handkerchief. Praise the Lord. So the, pro, the, the, the work we're doing here is as you, have been, as you have been discipled, go and do what? Help me say, I have a mandate. To be discipled? And to what? Say it. Come on, say it. I have a mandate. To do what? And? One more time. One last time. Let the angels take note of what you're saying. Praise the Lord. Every one of you has two relationships. The one who is discipling you and the one, the ones whom you are what? Discipling. It's not enough to receive. You must receive and give. The branch that is receiving nutrients from the roots must also bear what? Fruits. If it does not bear fruit, what will happen to it? They remove it. Praise the Lord. Is this one clear? Is that clear? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, to produce disciples, we teach them what disciples are taught. And like I said, it's not everything you teach that makes what? Disciples. Amen. This is why we have this book, Discipleship Code, and this is what we'll be doing. Go to First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. What uh, we, 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 we have 
a collection of stuff which we prepared and we we have been teaching it and it has been producing results everywhere. Praise the Lord. I've had testimonies upon testimonies. So because the revelation didn't come, somebody was saying something, uh, Pastor Ken was saying something about how I made a transition from versatile to specific. You know, in medicine, you, st- you start as a general general uh, practitioner until now, enter into what? Specialist. <laughs> the specialist can also do the general, but the general cannot do the... There are cases you have. The general pressure can, can, GP can see you. There are matters that say, ah, you need to see what? So as we mature in the things of the spirit, God begins to move in your area of what? Specialization. Where, where, where you are... Where, you ought to be, yeah. So I, I think I found my area. It doesn't mean I cannot touch other areas. You, you, you've not heard me on relationship, have you? You want to marry if I talk on relationship. And if you're married, you want to come re- remarry the person. If, I, if you see me on relationship, I've, even in, I've, I've, I've changed the, 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 um, the paradigm in the body of Christ in the age of the... I wrote a book. I call it How to Catch Your Man and Keep Him for Life. It's still one of the best books you ever read in relationship. Yes. One lady took the book and read and said, I should have read this book when I was in my 20s. I said, it's not late. So she began to operate the information she was getting in her 40s. And she got married in six months. Praise the Lord. Because this, these things don't come from... Let me write a book. No. They come from heaven. They are downloaded. And God says, write this book. Like discipleship code was given. First of all, God said, discipleship code. I said, what is it? He said, write it down. I wrote it down. The first day, he came and said, service. I wrote service down. Second day, unity. I wrote down. So, the, the thing was dictated from heaven. And to show it is from heaven, it is producing the same result everywhere. So, it's not, a, it's not something I came up with. It's a revelation for the body of Christ. Praise the Lord in the house. So this, he said, he said to me that the problem with you is that you have many people, but you don't have disciples. You have people you have raised. You know, it's, it's possible to raise somebody and call him a son, but he's not a disciple. It is dangerous to have a son who's not a disciple. Is that a son? There are people who are sons. Wasn't Ham a son? Wasn't Ham a son? Wasn't Judas a son? He was also a friend. He said, where are you, my friend? He was a friend. But he was not a true disciple. Discipleship is where you determine who becomes what. That is where, this has a factory that produces the ones you can be sure of. Praise the Lord. And to, to make disciples, you have to teach what disciples hear. And that's why well, I'm going to read this place. But if I am delayed, I write... So that you may know how you ought to what? Conduct yourself in what? In the house of God, which is what? The church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of what? The truth. Say amen, somebody here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This teaching has saved many, many churches. Saved many, many lives. It has helped many people. Praise the Lord. It has helped many people. Because it's not my message. It's what God gave for the church. Praise the Lord. So, those things which we teach, what are those things we teach? I will give you to you again. Number one, service. Write it down. Number one, service. You say you've heard about service. I don't think so. We're not teaching you service to know about service. We're teaching you service so you can serve. It's a spirit of service. Once he enters you, you start serving. You will no longer be content sitting there in church again. When the thing hits you. So it's not just a teaching. It's an impartation of life. Number two, we teach unity. You will find these things in the book. If you have not gotten, get as many copies for your church, for your members. If you're a pastor, get, you know, for many people before we leave here. Amen. The third one we teach, we teach... Um, Loyalty. The number three, loyalty. <laughs> loyalty has messed many of us up. It's loyalty. Mm-hmm. Everybody you meet is loyal. But the question is to what? Every person you see is, is loyal. The question is to what are they? Don't say anybody's loyal. Everybody's loyal. 
the question is, what is he loyal? Judas was loyal, but not to Christ. And every person you are trying to disciple, you must know what is loyal to first. Because if you don't know what they are loyal to, you will think they are with you. There's a conflict between you and that thing that you know you don't have that person. Some are loyal to their families, some are loyal to their stomach, some are loyal to their agenda, some are loyal to their political parties. When something happens, you see your member change in front of you. You say, well, uh-uh, I thought this person, because there's a conflict, and he has chosen a side. He chose that side before you came. Amen. Yes. So number four is, is humility. Number five, still worship. Still worship. Some of us are still struggling with paying tithes. We don't focus on tithes. 10% is not the standard in the New Testament. If you give God 10, who owns 90? You don't own anything. You're not an owner. You are what? Sam is steward. Who owns everything? It says, naked we came, and naked shall we... There's no other place you see that can happen as when somebody dies. You see how that person's worldly possessions. And you say, ah, look at, look at her shoe. Look at her slippers. Look at her glasses. Look at her phone. Look at her bag. Look at her house. Her car. His car. Number six is obedience. We teach obedience. I'm going to be taking this ones one after the other in the course of this. You know. Number seven is love. When we come back later, we're going to do this approach called two. Yes, we'll go to two. There's a different. There's a different book where you have discipline, when you have uh, integrity, when you have um, kingdom addiction, kingdom addiction, when you have sacrifice, when you have prophetic honor, when you have fruitfulness, I think also holiness. Praise the Lord. These are critical. So maybe in the next wave, we'll come and do two. But now we are on one. Hallelujah. There are still those who have not yet caught up with one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in the house. So, um, the number one is service. Number one is service. But before we go into discussing that, I want to conclude on what I call the principles of discipleship. This, this was important because um, even the things we can cover can be covered in those principles. Yesterday I gave you how many? I said a, a disciple is what? A disciple is not what? So every disciple has what? Every disciple has what? Your master can be your pastor. Your master can be the person God is using as a spiritual. He must have what? A pastor. A master. Have a master. One more time. You can never come into mastery until you have what? A master. We stress that yesterday. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 24. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, that's the first. Now, second, second principle is that the disciple today becomes what? That the God's pathway to leadership in the kingdom is through what? God's pathway to glory, enthronement, power, glory, honor, whatever you want to become in the kingdom. We must first be what? So if you don't go to discipleship, there is no place for you in the kingdom. You can go and grab a seat. You can go and sit in front. You can go and uh, pay some of the money and they'll propose, transfer you to where you want to go. You can do all kinds of things. You can manipulate the process. But God will not be there. There are people who 
where they sit. That's even when they sit at the back, it has more honor than those that sit. I'm not, I hope you know I'm not talking about us here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody I must be discipled if I must rise tomorrow. So don't rush the process. Don't try to promote yourself. Stay under until the time set by the Father. Amen. I think we've said that one. What's the next thing we said? If you have your notes, we said disciples obey. Is that also in your notes? Disciples do what? Obey. These are principles. Disciples obey. And also say a disciple is a servant. Did I say that? Disciples understand. Say I'm a servant. I'm a servant. I'm not an organ in the house of God. What are you? What are you? We're coming to talk about service very soon. Praise the Lord. A disciple is also a soul winner. A disciple is what? A disciple who is not a soul winner is a liar. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Jesus said, Follow me and I'll make you what? Fishers of men. So every follower of Christ ends up as a fisher of men. If you see or say you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, doesn't lead you into soul winning, you are not following Jesus Christ. And I hope you know, we are not disciples of men. We're disciples of who? Christ. Whose disciple are you? So, what is a pastor's job? A pastor is a model of Christ that you can see. Amen? So, you model, you follow his example and follow. So, that's why being a pastor is very important. You can't just be anyhow. You can't live anyhow because you are supposed to now look like who? Christ to the people. Who now use as an example? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, if Jesus was a soul winner and you're a disciple because the person who is discipling you is the person you're going to become. The Bible says it is enough for the disciple that he become like his master. So a disciple today becomes his master. If your master was a soul winner, then what are you going to be? Simple. If Jesus was a soul winner, who are you? Say I'm a soul winner. One more time. Soul winning is not a department that you don't want to join. It is your responsibility as a disciple. Every disciple is what? So I'm a soul winner. Whether I like it or not. Louder. I'm a soul winner. I am a soul winner. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Everywhere I go, I win souls. Praise the Lord. Please don't forget that one. You can't call yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ and you can stay years and years and no soul is saved. Who told you that one? The next principle is that Jesus promotes disciples into apostles. So a disciple becomes an apostle. Let me put it another way. We choose our apostles from among our what? So if somebody has not been a disciple, it is dangerous to make him an apostle. It is dangerous to promote into leadership somebody who has not gone to discipleship. He called his disciples. And out of them, he chose what? Twelve. And named them what? Everything Jesus did, he did from among disciples. If I were you, marry among disciples. If I were you, do business with what? Let the discipleship become your family. If you are looking for somebody to be your driver, let him be what? A disciple. <laughs> he will not carry your car run away. If you look for somebody who will fix your house for you, you see a disciple that give the job to a disciple. Jesus believed so much in this pool that anything you needed, he came from there. Don't go outside disciples. Some of you have disciples in your church, sisters who have followed Christ for years, and now you want to marry. Now go and collect one, one, one person you saw on, on Facebook. You now bring her to church. You will suffer. You left the daughters that have been in the kingdom, following the kingdom, and you went to pick a strange woman from outside. You think you're smart. 
Somebody said, You think you are doing me? You are doing what? You are doing yourself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I've been married to my wife now 24 years. This month will be 25 years. She was a disciple. She was my disciple. You see, your daughter, your daughter will always be your daughter. Amen. Don't marry someone because you don't know who she is. Don't know which demon is controlling. You can't marry and and then she now tells you that Olumbo Olumba is the only one that she knows about. After six months of marriage, she didn't tell you that one before. Help me say from among us. Where did they where did they choose the next apostles? They want to replace uh, uh, Judas from among us. Those who have been with the Lord. These ones that we know choose from there. It's a safer choice. You want somebody to be your associate pastor, make sure he was a disciple first. Very critical. From among us here. One who knows Jesus, who fears Jesus, who follows Jesus, who loves Jesus. Ah, choose him. He's the best person for the job. He chose his apostles from his disciples. But some people go and raise an elder because he has a big car and he has money. You don't make him elder. But he's not a disciple. One day he will turn the whole church against you. Because, of course, you know, people go to where uh, the money is what? Uh, flowing. You'll be there talking what to do in church and they'll be looking at the man to, for approval. You'll be preaching, though. Know? You're saying, this week we will do, we will do, and you're talking, they're, they're looking at the... And if the elder doesn't smile when you're preaching, nobody's going to... Uh, you say, you preach, Amen, hallelujah, huh? what's happening here? They look at the man. The man hands to us. People now just, <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus, because he's not the pastor. Power has what? Shifted. You, you gave power to the devil. And the devil is now using that power. Very soon they will chase out of your own church. Do not elevate whom you have not discipled. Do not do it. Don't give power to undiscipled people. This is the root of all the problem we have in the body of Christ now. Women leader. Bro- brothers leader. All those leaders. Because the brother speaks grammar. You're not making leader. You don't know who is behind the grammar. So we choose our apostles from where? Where do we choose our apostles? Where do we choose our leaders? You know, in the five levels of maturity which we teach everywhere, the first level is called the new convert. Help me say the new convert. That's the first one. You get born again, become a new convert. The second level is what we call members. Many of us are members. The third level is called what? Disciples. It is after your pass here, we're not going to leaders, ministers, pastors. Am I talking now? First disciples before you now talk about what? Because if they're not disciples, they, they cannot be pastors. But many churches don't have this one. So they have converts, members, leaders. And then you now have crisis. Praise the Lord. But the Lord is teaching us better now. Tell somebody I must bring discipleship back. It takes time. It takes time to disciple. Discipleship is not something you do on Sunday morning. You need to create space for it. You need to go, you need to go and have camps with it. You have to take people and spend time. The Bible says he chose these 12 that they may be what? With him. You have to spend time. Because there are some things you can't teach them. They have to catch it from your spirit. There are things, there are things that you can impart into them by just staying with them until they your spirit. The Bible said about the apostles that they took note of them, that they have been with Jesus. If you don't have time, you can't make disciples. If you are too busy running around, running around, running from, listen to me, it's it's not you that that will build the church. It is your sons that will build the church. The work does not belong to the pastor. The work belongs to the people. The pastor's job is to raise the people who do the work. Help me say, it's not my work. Your job is to raise what? Those who do the work. Or, a taboo wege. 
Because you're the one who will bring the cement. You're the one who will mix it. You're the one who will now chalk it. You're the one who will... You, after that, you are the one who will preach. After that, you are the one that will carry the, the arm that has spoiled. You are the one that will go and fix it. You are the one that will bring it back. You are the one that will write the book. You are the one that will print it. You are the one that will do everything. Next thing, you now start having high blood pressure. And your people are watching you. Pastor, is she rich with you? Pastor, in another one. Pastor, your last message, in the week. Pastor, you thought they were going to go week. Pastor, you can for doctor. They will not take you to the doctor. You are the one that will go and see the doctor. And you are the one that will come back. You are the one that will pay your bills. Because you have members. The work of members is to watch you die, watch you burn, watch you. That's their job. They are your spectators. They watch. And they make a mistake. Make a mistake of not remembering somebody's birthday. Make a mistake. <laughs> they, will, they, will, they will pay you. You are the one carrying everything. You are, ah. End of the day, you are tired. You feel you are working hard. Jesus telling you, who sent you? Who sent you? How many blocks did I carry in my time? All I did was raise men. He said he had gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the work of the ministry, for the equipping of the saints, to raise those who will do the work. I'm not doing any work. Even to carry chair is not my work. I will raise you. You carry it. It's not your work to do anything. Your work is to raise those who do the work. If you don't have people that will do that work, leave it. It's not the time. It's not the time. There are things you are carrying that is trying to kill your prayer life. You, you, are, you are stressed out. It's not the time. When the time comes, you will know. Meanwhile, let them keep watching you. I saw a man of God that the next thing I heard, he was preaching, and then he heard something, he ran out, he ran to settle people, settle quarry. All these pastors still like to settle quarry. If you don't want to settle your quarry, that's your business. Me, come and settle quarry for you. Do I look like a lawyer? Don't settle your quarry. From settling quarry, he now did, ah, and fed and died. They took the quarry to another church to go and settle it. Pastors are dropping dead anyhow. Because they think they have to do everything. You only have to do one thing. He said to Martha, one thing is what? Sitting down and listening. May God deliver us from what he did not give us. May God give us wisdom. Say, I have only one work to raise people. Stand up and say, I accept the work of human capital development in the kingdom. I have received the mandates. The mandates. Sit down. As this work is getting better and better for me, we are doing what they call, we are doing rural work, we are doing, uh, we are still trying to see whether we can break into international to take discipleship but what i'm relying on is the men and women god has helped me to raise so i don't have any stress from today you shall have no stress the lord will show you the pathway there's a man called dr david (laughs) O'Wheeley. you saw this mega pastor mega church pastors (laughs) Powerful big churches. That's just one branch. That's one branch. One branch of Domino City. One branch. That's one man is called Bishop. This one branch, which is not even pastoring. He visits. He said to me one day, I'm here to build the first church. I said, So what have you been doing? He said, I'm raising people who will build it. Anything. Don't know the cost of cement, cost of this cost. Just look at him now, traversing the whole world now. Today you see him in uh, Canada, tomorrow you see him. Uh, uh, the, the guy knows no fear. Hey! Life can be easier. What's that thing he wants to eat in this world he can't eat? 
Where does he want to go? You can go. Children. Help me say children. Can we say children's? Children's everywhere. Children's. Does he know the way to Netherland? No, but the children's went there, came together with the DNA of their father, came together and raised his walk and grew the walk. And when the walk was of age, they now invited him. And he came and now blessed them, collected offering, went to the next city. Help me say, my walk is simple. May God bring us to that place of rest. Oh my God. It doesn't mean there's a season in your life when as a father you have to, you have to do a lot of things. So I'm not saying uh, as a father at the beginning, of course. You have to do a lot of things by yourself. But as things begin to show, children begin to know their responsibility. Your work becomes less. Am I talking now? You now call one and say, you are now the person to handle this. Am I talking to anybody? Because they understand service. It wasn't always like that in that ministry. Let me even say boldly, part of what brought the revolution in that church was my teaching. I can say it openly. It was what this revelation, which when I sat with him in 2012 in May in one hotel after I went to visit them, he said to me, Pasema, Pasema, hey, you know, hey, hey. The man doesn't show emotion, but he showed emotion that day. He said, hey, hey, these people. These people want to kill somebody. I said, wait. I said, see what the Lord showed me. He said, what is it? I said, discipleship code. He said, discipleship code. Discipleship code. That is what we want now. He said, what are the codes? I gave him. He said, you are coming to teach. I said, no, I'm traveling. He said, you must teach. I said, I'm traveling. He said, no, no, no. You are. What do, what do you need? You are not going anywhere. You will teach. He said, you will teach. We're talking on Sunday. He said, you will teach it on Wednesday. I said, I have to. He said, Ah, Pasema, you're not going anywhere. I'm not using authority over you now. You're not going anywhere. You're not. I said, Okay. I stayed. When is it came? He called me on the phone and said, eh, Let's leave Friday. Friday came. He said, Saturday. Saturday came. I was, I was now. He said, Since you're already here now, come on Sunday. <laughs> so I came on Sunday. And then I began to teach on service. The Holy Ghost came down. The whole church was on their faces. Everybody crying. I don't know what happened that day. And then from there, a revolution began. It's been on till now. If, if that is the book they use for, for discipleship. In fact, they are now printing their own copies. They are using it. They don't play with it. So everybody who goes through that system must go through this book. Praise the Lord in the house. So I'm not coming to sell a book to you. I'm trying to bring you into what is already what happening. If you want to have stability, if you want to last, if you want to live long, tell somebody I will live long in this thing. I will not die before my time. So we have a new, uh, you know, uh, project to take this thing from city to what? Not only are you going to be part of it, you're going to be part of it. Praise the Lord. I want to see us joining because we're trying to raise a strong network of men and women who love the work of the Lord to say, Pasema, any city you are going, we are going with you. Is that what you're telling me? Praise the Lord. We need, to, we need to go and help the churches. What do you think? Do you think we need to go and help the churches? Do you think we need to go and, do you think we need to go and help our churches? I've, met, I've gone to places where people keep crying and say, why didn't I learn this earlier? It will not be a portion. You will not cry that cry. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Please, you understand the spirit which I'm speaking with. Eh? Do you understand what, what I'm talking about? Say, Holy Spirit, grant me revelation. I want to have a revelation of discipleship. Say it again. Talk to God personally. I'm going to take about 15 more minutes and then we'll close the service. We can come back in the evening. There's an evening service. 15 more minutes and we're done. I think I'm going to start talking the codes in the evening. But let me just, let me just give you these principles. These principles are important. Which number, how many have I given so far? Tell somebody out of disciples who raise apostles. Say it again. Come on. The person you cannot command, you should not promote. Period. Leave him there. Wait for the owners to come. Every seat has an owner. The right person is coming. 
pray the Lord. Now, the other principle every disciple must pray at least one hour every day. The minimum disciple prayer is one hour. Disciple is a personal prayer. They said to Jesus, Teach us how to what? As John taught disciples. So, disciples are taught prayer. Every disciple, because discipleship is not just by teaching, it's also by the power of the Holy Ghost. The transformation you are looking for can't only be done by talking. There's a place where prayer takes its walk to the next level. He says, My children whom I travel in bed, say Christ be what? Formed in you. So there's a power prayer, prayer uh, there's the part uh, prayer plays in discipleship. So you have to embrace prayer. Say, I'm a person of prayer. Matthew 26, verse 40 to 41. Jesus said to disciples, Couldn't you wait for with me for at least what? Can we say at least? Can we say at least? So the least is what? The least is what? It's a must. You must pray. Your minimum prayer life as a disciple. There are those who are doing seven hours. Someone like Papa Omobai wakes up at six, by five or six, prays to twelve every day before talking to anybody. So when he tells you your matter is settled. He's coming from somewhere. Not this one you're saying it's settled, and then the man has now gone to police, and police has <laughs> glory to God, somebody here. Six hours minimum. When he has crusade, nobody sees him the whole period. You can't do this thing without power. Praise the Lord. Therefore, you can't do it without prayer. The next principle is that disciples read the word. Disciples do what? every disciple must know the word of God he said in John chapter 8 31 to verse 32 he says continue in my word then are you my disciples what indeed in our, in our said, you shall know the truth the truth shall do what make you what free praise the Lord a disciple must be a student of what the word number the next number I don't know what it is in your name. Number, number what Disciples are followers. We have stressed that. I think you've written that before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The other principle is that Jesus is always with his disciples. Jesus is what? He is always with his disciples. Right now, it's a principle. Anytime you see a disciple, you see somebody that carries the presence of God. Number, I think, 12. Disciples support the work of the kingdom with their resources. Disciples do what? They are the backbone of the kingdom work and expansion work. Disciples are trained to support the work of God. Disciples, so the more disciples you are making, the more supporters you have. They are the ones upon whom the burden of the ministry rests. Others, others see it as a problem. Some even are members of your church and they call your church. Uh, I'm, I'm not coming to your church this Sunday. They're your member. Or they'll say, This church. This church doesn't close on time. It's not a member. This church is not serious. Disciples are the ones that carry the weights of the burden of the ministry, it takes training. We'll talk about that later. And it begins when you teach stewardship. Teach what? I told you stewardship is the standard, not tithes and offering. What's the, what's the standard? What's the standard? Can we say all that I have belongs to God? And to him, I will give it whenever he needs it. He gave Abraham a son, She, That's stewardship. How did he test his stewardship? Can I have that boy? So if God cannot have what he gave you, he will not give you more. If God cannot take what he gave you, he can't give you more than that. He said, let me give you, and he gave the boy to him, and he returned and gave him nations. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Say, I'm not an owner. One more time. When we teach still worship in some places, what people do is they come and bring, I've seen people drop land documents, house, complete buildings, they try to drop it. Still worship when they think, and we're going to handle still worship in the course of this maybe on Sunday. I don't know, or I don't know. The Holy Ghost will direct. Praise the Lord. 
Tell somebody, I am a supporter. So you cannot sit down and see a project like this going on and you are waiting for them to call you. You all offer it and say, Pastor, where can I what? Because you understand the kingdom runs upon the legs of disciples. Amen. Number 13. Disciples take permission. Write it down. Disciples what? They take what? Permission. From their master before leaving. They are under subjection of their master. They don't act without what? Permission. Disciples take what? One man was going to bury his father. He came to Jesus and said, Allow me to go and bury what? Many of us don't understand that. They just travel and pastor discovers you have traveled on Sunday morning. They take what? You understand that they are under authority. We'll do, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do more of that later in the evening. Praise the Lord. And finally, disciples live by codes. Live by what? Disciples live by what? Codes. A code is a, is a collection of rules and systems that govern an organization. Praise the Lord. So, the codes we live by it's what we call discipleship what codes which we are going to talk about we're going to start off on the codes this evening by the grace of god we'll start with uh, there's going to be an, an outpouring of the spirit of service this evening with breakthroughs taking place in our ministries please let me beg you if you're a pastor here invite all your members don't say you you come no bring everybody because the more people that can be discipled here the easier the work will be for you am i talking to you somebody here don't keep anybody. Invite everybody. If you have another program, shut it down. Let me advise you. Don't fix any program this period. This is for your good. If you're the only one hearing what you're hearing, they will not know where you're coming from, where you're talking. Let them come and hear what you're hearing. Maybe you have been telling them they didn't hear it. Come, let somebody that has grace tell them. I have grace. I have grace. I have grace in this area. I know my area of grace. I'm not, I'm not confused. I'm not a footballer. I'm not a banker. I'm not a, uh, I don't teach money. I'm, that's not my area. But this one, I will turn that to a hardened member to a disciple by the grace of God this evening. Go and bring them. Invite them. Invite everybody. Even some pastors need to be discipled. Some pastors. How can they make disciples when they're not disciples? You have a program like this going on, you're fixing your own program. It shows you don't have sense. You don't have sense. This is for your good. Talk to them and say it is for our good. Let's break this break this evil spirit in a boy state. This lack of cooperation. Let's break that power in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. The kingdom must march forward. And the gates of us shall not prevail against it. Stand to your feet, somebody here. I want you to begin to pray. Let's pray for a major harvest this week for the kingdom. That God will, God will receive a harvest for himself. There's going to be an outpouring from this evening as we enter into the courts. Friday night, Saturday morning, all the remaining sessions. Pray, pray. I want to see you praying. We are done. This session is over. Ask God to do something unique to your ministry. Ask God to do something in this city. The power of the enemy is broken. The power of the Leviathan is broken. We pray the Spirit holding this land down. Open your mouth and begin to come against that Spirit holding this land. Come against the Spirit and powers. The forces that do not allow men to come together. He says, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to come together in unity. Oh my God. Satan fears the unity of the saints. Satan will not help us come together. Satan doesn't want us coming together. Every power rising against the agenda of God in this city. We we'll bring you down. Open your mouth and pray. Get angry. The time of liberation has come. The moment of change has come. The season of transformation has come. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, 
You can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries, Raising Global Leaders. Global Leaders.